Alright, so I wanted to make this video uh, because the existing video that I got for Beta Care and stuff, as a matter of fact, there's several videos on there, but you'll get the gist with this one, uh, that are specifically back when I was importing and breeding. Um, and so I kind of wanted to give an update on Beta Care as far as my self bred stuff and what I've been doing. This will not alter at all when it comes to imports, what you should be doing, and you should, by all means, if you're working with any imports at all, you should be reflecting back on those videos, not this one. Um, so, in general, imports are kind of tricky uh, for some. If you're gonna use the RO water and follow all the steps that I teach in the other videos, though, I will say that there is not really gonna be a difference for you um, in import versus self-bred, other than you will, um, in general, like, I mean, I can even have, uh, you know, males or even females. I can have ones that I've spawned five times, and, I mean, you won't even notice. So, um, I don't, that being said, I don't offer them, but you can. I mean, they don't even look scathed. But, um, anyways, back to what I was getting to. Just the same, I mean, there isn't really going to be any differences if you're following all of those steps accurately and fully. Um, you'll have ease with that, no issues. But that being said, for anyone who has been, you know, like, let's say you're making a tank and you want to have, you know, lots of plants, or let's say you want to have substrate, or let's say, you know, you are like, really, man, large water changes, even like on a larger tank every three days, five if you're lucky, and even then you can't do it consistently without having eventual eventual issues or failure, that's kind of not my style. Well, so I've taken all of these things into consideration with moving forward with all my self-bred stuff. And, um, some of the genetics I've had a fair amount of time actually kind of manipulating in ways that I, you know, and it's been kind of experimental too, too, because it, in the end, you can't make a species do something it doesn't so um, one thing you can do is kind of play God a little bit as far as what they're a little bit more tolerant towards. Um, so one thing that I've worked really hard for, um, kind, of, kind of writing a very, very safe line without any sacrifice, um, and I've kind of inched it up. So for example, one thing that I've done with all my generations of these and will continue to do um, probably until I reach 7.5 is um, I have allowed my pH swings because I'm always swinging them up and down and I talked about the other video but um, one of the things that I do is I'm constantly swinging their pHs around so you know with imports you're gonna have to keep that pH anywhere between you know 6572 72 being a top out before in the big picture I'm saying there's always going to be those of you who try and argue this, and that there's no room for that. So, in the big picture, 7.2 is about the, the, the your max out. So that you're going to want to be able to do with that, and your GH needs to be between uh, 60 and 30, or if you're using the drop system, it needs to be between um, you know two and three drops, four drops at most. So um, for your GH. That being said, one thing that I've you know, like I said, I've been working on is trying to kind of, without sacrifice to growth, color, development, health, anything else, I've been trying to slowly inch up that benchmark a little because to, you know, for, for most people to be able to, you know, smack right into that zone without just having to go straight up roadie water and do all the stuff that I was telling you guys before, um, is just a little bit of a headache for you guys. And I understand that. Um, and it doesn't make too big of a difference for me. I mean, I don't really care, but I mean, it was, you know, I mean, given that I'm not making them for myself only, it, it's, it's important to kind of keep audience in mind with this. Um, so, you know, one thing that I've worked really hard on being able to actually even do is, you know, uh, these can tolerate all the way up to 120 GH. I mean, I, I've even had been able to actually do uh, six to eight drops um, for the GH with my self-bred stuff as time has went on and it will continue. I think for the GH, honestly, I'm probably about as far as I can go. I think I might be able to get a little bit more on the pH for 
you know, where you should be kind of trying to shoot for initially and kind of maintain around in that ballpark. Um, you know, seven, five, seven, six. And I don't, I honestly, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it. And, and I don't think I even should because it, that, that's just not these fish. That's not what they're for. Um, but I think seven, six is probably looking like, I mean, I'm thinking that's going to be as far as you're going to be able to really get with these in the big picture without seeing immediate consequence. Even if it's just at first, hey, they look kind of dull and maybe they act a little lethargic or they're doing fine, but after a couple months they start not looking too hot and then you start seeing issues such as bacterial, fungal, you know, uh, digestion issues, you name it. I mean, Popeye, all these things, right? Because you're trying to make the fish do something it doesn't want to do. So um, its system is not going to be actually operating at an optimal range. So again, what I've done with these is try and kind of really work on getting it a little bit higher. Just just in the grasp of a little bit easier for people to attain. Um, another thing with the self-bred stuff that I've slowly went towards is instead of having to use roadie water all the time, as far as like for the big picture, most success, screaming results every time, we're talking like no fish dying. I mean, you got a smooth ride like no other, right? Um, I've worked towards actually bringing them into the realm of tap water. I don't think anyone can ever really say that you'll be able to use tap water in any city or any of that stuff. You know, you, you're, that's going to have to be case by case. You're, there's always going to be, you know, possibilities that they're not going to like something in the water, have long-term effects immediate effects, stuff like that, but again, I've worked towards getting them at a point where you can get the same results as the roadie water or close, depending on, like I said, what, what uh, municipal water system you have or well water, you know, what kind of things are you doing for it, but um, again, I, it always was kind of really irksome for me to have to tell people, like, look, I'm sorry, but with these imports, I mean, they're almost like video characters, and in the big picture here, I mean, it's it's pretty decent to it's you know it's, it's pretty solid saying that a lot of people have issues um, if they don't follow things to a T with the imports. It's just you know it's the difference between success or miserable failure, and you know very few percentage of people unfortunately want to do what it takes to actually give them exactly what they need. So. Um, again, I've just tried making them a little bit more user friendly um, without sacrifice to health, color, development, anything, you know, none of that, uh, or hardiness. And um, like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of the success that I've made. I know it's not terribly large, but the, if you understood these fish on like a, on a very, very deep, like deep, deep, deep level, you would know that that little bit of success is actually. I mean, it's 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 leaps and bounds, um, especially if you're looking like all across the U.S. Those 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 little bit of leeways there make a big difference. It's also the difference between someone who need, need to be able to actually you you know cut their water with distilled water or just switch to you know roti water entirely or and and so for that I'm pretty proud of it. Um, and you know, like I said, I, I'm never going to advise anyone to do anything that's going to sacrifice anything in health or. Anything longevity of the fish. I, I just won't, and I'll never even condone it. So, um, like I said, I've been working on getting them to be able to kind of tolerate a little bit higher of a TDS as well, uh, total dissolved solids, and um, you know, even uh, dissolved organics. The organics ones a little bit, you know, and as far as like organic matter specifically, is a little bit trickier because TDS can also be, and I know the like, minerals and all that's organic, yes, but I'm talking about like decaying plant matter, um, you know, waste from food, things like that, bacteria, all that stuff. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about dissolved organics. I'm not talking about like as a whole. So just to kind of differentiate, obviously those things are the same but different. Um, so, I mean, I could take, for, for example here, I could take a TDS meter and throw it in you know, really, really, really high extract water with, that actually has a really low GH and come out with a super high TDS. There's, there's all sorts of variables in there, but what I'm specifically talking about here is 
the dissolved organics that are not, you know, like they're, they're dissolved organics, you know, it's not mineral stuff. You think, well, you're looking at like decaying plant matter, fish waste, you know, all that stuff, lat, you know, even nitrates, things like that. So, um, you know, as far as like, oh yeah, well, my water test's fine, but you know, and, and my nitrates are pretty low, but hey, so I don't need to do a water change. That's what I'm talking about, and the answer is no. So I've been working on getting them to be able to kind of tolerate a little bit more of that, but um, in the end, again, these fish will always require lots of fresh water. Um, I have made some progress on that, which is why with my self-bred stuff, I will allow for a light substrate to be used and cleaned frequently. Not, oh, I'm gonna let bacteria grow in there, and oh yeah, I'm gonna use it as some kind of filtration. I don't wanna hear that. I, I don't condone that, and I never will. I don't even honestly care what species it is. That That's totally unnecessary, and quite honestly, you should be doing your job better than that. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, it's just, you know, depending on what, what spectrum of keeping you're on and what you're trying to shoot for and stuff like that. But, um, like I said, um, people taking my self-bred stuff and using a light, a light, amount of substrate we're talking like three quarters of an inch or so right um you're fine just keep it clean um i grow these and intentionally from the start what i do is i allow that to kind of creep up and i just let it flow down just it's, it's just raising 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 and i do this during the whole first part of their development for the first like two months three months and um yeah you know, some of them don't make it. Some of them, you know, they're they're like, I'm not gonna tolerate this, and they just die. Um, as you go along, though, that percentage goes a little bit lower. It, it's it's kind of slow, but it does move. And so, basically, what you end up with when you're done doing it this way is you end up with none of the ones that are basically gonna end up going to someone's home and then be like, oh, when they, you know, over, you know, let's say that they go on vacation for a week and they're like. Oh my goodness! I came back and all hell broke loose. You know, something like that. Um, again, this video is kind of just to kind of update the things that the other video does not really, you know, is, isn't really updated or true for these fish. And like I said, these these changes might be kind of minute for some of you guys, but they're pretty pretty large. To put it in perspective here as well, my ratio of anyone coming back to me. You know two three months later after getting fish and stuff like that and they're not saying like oh look my fish are sick but the ratios of people having any kind of issues with them based on basically trying to break the rules right um so the people are allowed to get away with you know all hell with my self-bred stuff all hell i mean some of the, sometimes i mean i'm not going to condone it i'm not going to advertise all the things they're doing but you know in general the hardiness factor is much higher with being a little bit more lax on the rules, right? So that's that's kind of my goal, and because it's not fun for me if I'm, you know, dealing nice, healthy fish, everything else, keeping everything, you know, boom, 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 and then people aren't inevitably people aren't going to do their job all the way, and next thing you know, okay. So um, just the same though, I think that pretty much covers all of the main differences here. Uh, pH can be a little bit higher. I'm working towards seven six. Right now, I can go. I can go like seven seven four seven five. I don't know. Sometimes I even like hit seven six. But you can't keep it there as they're matured. So you know, like I said, I mean, I'm working on it. But um, I think as a whole, that plus you know, you can be a little bit more lax on water changes. They still require a lot of nonstop fresh water. Um, Temperature still needs to be 82 degrees. Um, you know, plants aren't as big of an issue because I literally just let them saturate when they are growing. So every generation, I'm just letting sit in like high algae, high plants. You know, whole banana leaves going on and just sitting in there. I mean, I, I'm intentionally kind of weeding out anyone who wasn't going to make it through the you know the, the, the race start to finish. Um, without without bringing it to an extreme, right? So I'm not gonna sit there and be like, well, I had a I had a spawn of 300 and you know 100 of them live, so yeah, those are the survivors. No, I'm not gonna do that. But you know, it, it, maybe if I see like 20 of them, it's like, oh, 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 I just can't. You know, that's fine. Sorry, but that's just the way it goes.
And so those are the small adjustments that I make. I'm not gonna sit there and try and, you know, like, like I said, max out, like, well, you're gonna live or whatever. You know, that's not, I'm just not gonna do that. And quite frankly, like I said too, you can't really make a species be something that it's not. So, um, not without significant sacrifice if at all. Um, so my goal here is not to actually trade, change up entirely what it is exactly that they need. It's more so to be able to just kind of raise the bar a little bit towards being user friendly. Um, that's pretty much all there is to this video, you guys. I mean, those are, those are the differences. Those are the differences, but they are pretty large. You know, um, people can take. You know, if you're going to use plants with with the self bred stuff, fine, fine. Just make sure that they're you know you, whatever disinfection. Uh, method you want to use, make sure they're super well rinsed off, everything else before you get everything started up, stay on top of, you know, maintenance, keeping your substrate clean, stuff like that, you know, just just make sure that your environment's nice and clean, make sure that you're doing regular maintenance, um, you can be a little bit more lax with these guys, and have literally, like, visually and physically no sacrifice. Um, I'll continue making whatever progress I can, but I, I do think that you know, maybe over the course of the next year or so, I might make a little bit more. Um, I'll keep you guys updated as far as where I kind of find that, I, that I'm maxed out before I'm kind of right in the line of maybe you went a little too far or you're starting to get there and I'll back it off a little bit and then that's where we should probably stay. Um, but that being said, like I said, I mean, the, the, the growth and development that I get is, you know, even with these adjustments and things that I'm doing are literally just as good as anyone, you know, good as anyone overseas. Like the, they're growing really fast, they color really fast, they're always ahead of schedule, uh, very, very healthy, very high survival rate, you know, and, and that's just, you know, that's where I kind of like to keep it is, you know, that to me is success. You're not sacrificing something, you're making adjustments that are small enough, gradually enough, that you can actually see what they're really doing. And that doesn't mean like over the course of like two generations or something. That's like, and that doesn't mean with like one, one, one set of genetics even. That means as a whole, you're moving everyone up and kind of seeing what it is exactly that, that, exactly that they can tolerate. And um, you know, like I said, one of the one of the key factors there is allowing them to swing further than I did before and allow them to stay there. So I'm not just swinging them up and then dropping it right away. I'm swinging it up and letting them stay for three to five days. Or if they're really younger, I'm letting them stay up, you know, higher up in pH. I'm letting them stay there for months and then dropping them. Really well. So uh, strategically, I think it's working out pretty well. Um, I'm pretty proud, like I said, of the adjustments that I've been able to make with these and in turn provide for you guys um, much more user-friendly fish. Again, uh, anyone watching this video does in fact need to go through and watch my original baby care video because that has an immense amount of information. This is more so just kind of like an update on it uh, so that you guys can kind of figure that out. Keep in mind as well, uh, for those of you who are not getting fish from me on YouTube or something like that too, um, if you do get in fish and then you're breeding them, they, as a whole, you will see, unless, like I said, unless if you're just pushing it way too far, that you'll never get a species to do something it doesn't want to do. But as a whole, when you start breeding your own um, generations, even the adults that in the long run wouldn't have tolerated things for you and will probably die, um, the, the, the offspring will be much more viable for you. And as you continue to go, only that much more viable. So even if you're not taking like super extreme steps or you know close documentation of what you're doing and stuff like that, you can you can expect that as you continue down your journey, things will get a little bit better for you as far as um, you know having issues in the big picture. And I'm not talking about two fish. I'm not talking about ten fish. I mean, you, I, although realistically you could bring it in the scope of ten fish, but I'm not talking about ten fish. I'm talking about hundreds of fish, right? And many, 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 many states and cities. And so, just keep that in mind. So like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm actually pro imports as well. I'm not against imports at all. Um, they, it's a different ball game, it is, and needs to be understood and everything like that. It can be a little tricky, but I do in fact love them. Um, I don't import this stuff 
anymore, other than if it's something I specifically want for myself um, to work with. And even then, you know, I mean, they undergo full spectrum treatments. They're staying, even then, they're staying away from all my stock. Like, I don't, I don't allow any of that stuff next to my thing. I'm not, I'm not playing around with that, because I'm not, quite frankly, as an old importer, I, I am kind of done, kind of tired of it, you know? It's kind of one of those things like a love-hate situation. Um, find yourself in the big picture in a lot of situations that you probably shouldn't be. So if you're, you know, thinking that you're gonna take like a one-time shot of an investment for a fish you want, and, and you're putting all your, all, all your, you know, money in that little piggy bank there and expecting it to turn out, a lot of people have it not turn out, right? So probably not a safe idea. I'm not gonna tell you guys that I advise you to do that. But now let's say that you take it a little bit more seriously than that. You're a lot, you're, you know, you're, you're really invested. You're like, you know, I'm willing to take the bumps and bruises of the journey. So, you know, you can basically win some, you lose some, and the, but you keep pushing forward and you don't really look at it as in how much money you're spending per fish. Uh, and you're looking at it like a total investment in betas and yourself, then, you know, I, I think importing is probably a lot more, um, a lot more of a solid investment for you because, you, you know, you're not going to get so upset and you'll be able to actually still get where you want to go. For someone looking for like an individual pet though, again, and then you're blowing your whole life, you're like, you know, another thing is you get snowballed with, you know, oh yeah, sure, I'll charge you only 25 for this fish, right? And someone's like, well, that's cheap. So they, they buy it, well, now you're gonna have to pay shipping and you're gonna have to pay the importing fees, you're gonna have to pay shipping to you. Now suddenly that $25 fish, no joke, is you're looking at like 75 bucks, probably all in all, maybe a little lower. And now let's say that fish by chance you know, arrives dead. If the seller is going to be, you know, good with you um, and honor, you know, okay, fine, it's dead, fine, I'll send you another one, then you're still even gonna then have to go and you're gonna have to buy, you're gonna have to pay for the shipping again in that country, your country, importing fees and then shipping to you. So, I mean, it, it, it's, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it's kind of a, a mess, really. Um, it can, certainly can be, so it, it's something that I love and that I certainly not even will help people do, but I think that it's just important to understand exactly what you're looking at and keep in mind as well, that's not to guarantee that there's not going to be any health issues as well, which is not going to be guaranteed for anything. It arrives alive in the bag or dead, and that's as far as it goes, so as soon as you open the bag or, you know, whatever, they don't care. And that's not their job. They're just like, nah, you got the fish, it's alive, why? You know? Uh, I, I think it's just something that people need to be a little bit more aware about. And, um, you know, like I said, if you're going to take the risk, it's an assume, it is an assumed risk. Uh, and if you're fine with that, then just remember when something pops off that you were fine with it and you expected it. Um, but so long as you're doing that and not having false expectations for things or, you know, thinking that it's just going to be smooth sailing all the time got away with it two, three, four, five times, I guarantee you, you will come across some pretty big, devastating blows. Um, but again, you just kind of have to learn to take that in stride and accept it for what it is and understand that that's just part of part of how it goes in this, in this scene and you know, things like that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, I'm going to proof watch this just to make sure that I didn't leave anything out. Um, it's important. Sorry if I've rambled a little bit. I've been pretty tired working with this stuff with the phone company and finally got some really nice resolve, but um, after seven months. Uh, but just the same, I hope all you guys have a good day. I'm going to stop this now so I can watch this.